What's up guys, Crypto Renegade here again with another video for you and in today's video we are doing part two of the BC Vault hardware wallet setup and configuration. So in part one I did an unboxing and kind of an overview of what makes this wallet different. Um, it's actually a pretty cool device, very different than anything uh, hardware wallet wise that I've seen in a while. Um, so if you want to get more information on it, um, head over to my website bitcoinlockup.com. The most recent review I just posted here is the BC Vault and I go pretty in depth and and so on. So if you want to get more information on some of the technicals and, and some of how, you know, overall of how it works and how it compares to uh, some other hardware wallets on the market, go out and, and head over there. So uh, today I'm going to go ahead and set it up for the very first time. The only thing I did ahead of this video was go to the BC Vault website and there's a DMG file. So it's kind of like a uh, just a regular desktop application um, similar to Ledger Live if you have a Ledger. So you go to the website, you download it, and then we're going to go ahead and take a look at getting it set up and initialized for the first time. Um, the only one other thing I just remembered that I did before this is when you plug in your device for the very, very first time, uh, as I mentioned in the review and in the previous video, you actually shake, physically shake the device. That activates the random uh, number generator, and that will actually... Uh, make it set up quicker and a little bit more securely than the recovery seed because there is no recovery seed card here, um, which is pretty unique. So uh, it'll set up a global pin and a password, and we'll look at that in just a second. So let's go ahead and walk through this together and get the BC Vault set up. So, all right, perfect. So I have the application pulled up, um, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in the device now. Perfect. I'm greeted with a welcome screen. Thank you for purchasing BC Vault. Da 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 da. We go next. It says security. Make sure that you choose a strong password. You know, basic stuff here. And there's a one global pin and one global password to get into the account. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in my um, Okay, so on the device itself, I know you can't see it, but on the device screen itself is asking me to please enter a new pin. So I'm going to do that on the physical device here. Okay. Okay. So the global pin and the global password give you access to the entire account, and then you can set individual um, pins and passwords for each one. So I'll try this one more time. So what's interesting here on the device is when you set the pin, all you can use is the directional D-pad. So it's not like a number screen that pops up. It's actually, you just got to choose the arrows. So you got to choose a pattern for the pin using the directional D-pad. Um, so obviously up, down, left, or right, and you can choose it in any order that you want. But please make sure you don't forget this because once you set the pin and the password, uh, if you forget that, you're done. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and do this here. All right. Okay, now I have a progress screen encrypting storage. Please wait. All right, so we have the global pin set. We have the password set. All right, I'm going to go ahead and enter in. All right. And there's a time delay, like a progress bar on the device itself. So you have to enter in the pin within, I think it's 15 seconds. So here we are on the dashboard once you log in. So, okay, so now it's telling me that there is a firmware update. Um, sure, I'll go ahead and update it while we're here. It's asking me if my backup is recent. So when you do a backup, they have a... 
uh, a QR code encrypted backup that comes in the box or that you can um, use the SD card because there is an SD card slot. Um, so, uh, you know, it was just asking me, and since obviously this is the first time we're setting this up, um, you know, there's nothing that I need to do. I have no wallets or anything created at this point. So, uh, progress bar, why it's upgrading the firmware. Uh, this is a very pretty seamless process, you know, as far as updating firmware. I don't have any extra buttons to click or anything. It's just authorize the, you know, all the changes on the device, which is good. So, um... I'm assuming that I'm gonna to have to enter in my PIN. I'm assuming that I'm gonna to have to enter in my PIN um, every time I authorize a transaction or set up a wallet. So we'll find out in just a second. It's about 48% on the progress here for the firmware. And we'll do some quick navigation and wrap this up. But so far, the setup has been pretty painless. Setup on the some of the other hardware wallets, like the Trezor, the Ledger, is is pretty uh, daunting or strenuous. You know, there's a lot of steps, a lot of clicks, a lot of this, a lot of that. But so far, the experience that I've had with this has been pretty pleasant. So we're at 95%. Okay. And what I like about this is that there's two-factor auth, so uh, everything that I do on the screen asks me to confirm on the device, which is secure, which is what I like. Okay, so it's saying operation finished. Please disconnect and reconnect. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, now it's asking me for the pin on the device. Sweet. Okay, so settings, um, preferences, update software, reset, show hide all currencies. Uh, let me go to preferences real quick. Let me change euros to USD since I'm in the United States. Um, warn me if the ex if the fee exceeds. You can um, set your confirmation on if there's a fee over a certain amount to have it warn you on the device. Confirmations. This is for blockchain confirmations uh, until it's accepted. So if you are sending out a transaction and you want five block confirmations before it authorizes, you can set that here. Um, advanced mode. Warn me if BC Damon isn't running. That's more of just like a, a checker in the background on the firmware device. But I updated it to USD. I'm going to go to apply all changes. Yes. Device settings. Uh, my device name is uh, is defaulting is my BC Vault. I'm gonna go Crypto Renegade here, since that is my name here. Confirm the changes. You can change your global pin and password here. You can back up the device here, restore it, and update firmware. So um, pretty cool here. So I'm gonna go back to home, and I'm gonna look at uh, you know Bitcoin here. There's a default. <laughs> Here's the bounty wallet. So there is. 1.1 Bitcoin here, if you can somehow uh, hack the device and get the private key for the device, this is yours. So it's pretty cool here that you can uh, uh, do that. That's sort of gimmicky, but I kind of like it. It just shows their confidence in the security. Uh, so if I go to more, um, if I want to add more than Bitcoin, it says choose currency in the dropdown. So this is interesting here. So... The default ones, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Stellar, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin Dash, Dogecoin. Um, I can go ahead and do that here. Name a wallet, name a password, and then I can add a new vault. Uh, so that's pretty sweet. Um, very cool. So I'm going to see if I can go back home. And if I add a new wallet in the middle screen, same thing here. So I can add these default... Uh, coins here. So let me go ahead and add just for, you know, just for this example, I guess. Let me go ahead and do an Ethereum. So I'm going to do Crypto Renegade ETH Wallet. I'm going to set a password again and add wallet. 
device action. So it's asking me to enter a pin when I create a new wallet. It's pretty secure. Asking me to confirm it. Very nice. So this is default wallet, so I can send. Shows a list of transactions. Obviously, there's nothing on here, so I can send, receive. It pops up a QR code, which is really nice. So if I have money on a mobile wallet on my phone, I can use the camera, scan the QR code, and send it directly to the device. So that is pretty cool. Um, pretty sweet here. I'm not showing how to add any of the other uh, currencies. Oh, here we go, show hide currencies. So these are the default ones that are shown. If I want to go ahead and add all of them, I can. Um, Omise Go, Walton Chain, Icon, Binance, VE Chain. Man, I can just add them all. Tron, Economy, Vibrate, Syndicator. There's some interesting choices up here, and as you can see in the background, um, they pop up on the top bar. So this is pretty cool. Um, so I'm gonna close and apply. So I just click on each wallet and kind of navigate back and forth. Um, so it looks like it's only showing about seven here, but that's pretty cool. Um, and then yeah, it just shows your wallets and then the values and then, um, so view all wallets. View all the transactions. If I go back home, it's all here. You can import a wallet. And if I want to add a new one, you can add as many wallets as you want. I believe the, as I mentioned uh, in the previous video and in the article, it sounds like you can have up to 2,000 total wallets. So if you want to have a special, a special pin and a special password for um, each wallet, then you can do that. And so this is a good way if you want to have, you know, like let's say you're a corporation and you want to have multi-sig or you want to share a hardware wallet with your family and that way each wallet is protected. So you can each have your own wallet with your own custom pin so no one else can access it and your own custom password so no one can access it. Um, you know, that's actually a very secure way to share a hardware wallet with other people. So all they have to know is the global pin and the global password, but they can set their own password and their own pin. You know, in fact, I'm going to let, I'm going to let my daughter set up a wallet on this and we're going to share that. That's actually pretty cool. So just wanted to kind of give you a setup and overview tutorial of the BC vault here. Um, this is the first time I did it, as you saw, I kind of navigated around and saw, but the interface is very intuitive, very simple, very easy. Um, as you can see, the coin support, um, I don't need to uninstall or reinstall apps like I would on Ledger or, or some of the other hardware wallets, so this is actually pretty cool. Um, so I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, you know, I don't have anything ready in terms of, in terms of uh, testing and transaction. In fact, Although I might, um, let me go ahead and add, I think I have something like a couple of cents worth of Bitcoin cash. So I'm gonna do crypto renegade BC vault, set a password, special password here for my Bitcoin cash. And I now I have to enter the pin on the device. So you can set different pins for different wallets as I was just talking about, so that's pretty cool. So let me see if I can do this right here. So I'm going to receive Bitcoin Cash. It looks like they have the cash address format and the legacy format. Um, I'm gonna pull up my mobile wallet because I have a few cents on here. We can just do a quick live test transaction. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna send 10 cents.
So I'm authorizing this real quick on my mobile wallet. All right, so the payment sent. So I just scanned the QR code from my iPhone and now it is sending, let's see what this says here. I can just close it. Okay, so I am sending it to that address. Let's see how long it takes to get here. Uh, if, it ha if it's longer than 30 seconds, I'll, I'll shut it off on the video. But so far, that was pretty simple. Wow, look at that, just popped up right here. So 10 cents received. And this arrow here means it's pending. So it's still going through its block confirmations, but look at that. Um, since it looks like it's European, it's doing a, a different date format, but 9-12-2019, that's today's date. And it's pending the transaction. So uh, I won't wait for it to confirm, but as you can see, that was pretty seamless, pretty easy to use. So I, I definitely recommend this hardware wallet. Uh, just based off of my first impressions here, very easy to use, a lot simpler than some of the other ones, and the security is top notch. So uh, that's my recommendations. There's a link down below for you to order it, and there is a special discount at the end. So if you go through checkout, you will see what the surprise discount is. Um, if you liked the video, it, found, it brought you any value, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and a comment. I would really appreciate it. And uh, that's it for today. Um, leave a comment down below of what your thoughts are on this so far. And uh, if you have any other hardware wallets you want me to review that I haven't put up on my channel yet, leave it down below and I'll make sure and get it done for you guys. So um, that's it for today. Crypto Renegade 